Hello, everybody. It is July 13th, 2021. I'm Bryce Castillo, your pre-show navigator for Great Night, the podcast you're about to hear a little bit. But in the meantime, uh, welcome to the pre-show. We're going to send you over to the green room in just a moment, but uh, just a little bit of what's coming up on the show. We've got Andrew Heaton on. That'll be a lot of fun. We've got some fun ideas uh, involved with him. Plus, uh, plus we got a game. The Startup Spelling Bee is back. A lot of fun. All right. Well, uh, we're, we're here in the pre-show. So that's coming up. Uh, of course, Brett's still around. In fact, I believe the guys are in the green room now. Uh, so I'm going to take us live over to the green room here. And um, let's let's see what uh, the fellas are up to. Hello, fellas. Can you, oh, can oh, you hear me? Hey, uh, uh, Hello? Uh, yeah, I, I, we can uh, hear barely. You. Is it OK to turn this up? Uh, I guess so. I'm not going to talk to you too, too much, but hello. Okay, well, like, uh, well, we need to hear, I, yeah, we, 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 we hear can't your understand sweet what voice yeah, when yeah. you do. Yeah. Okay. There you well, go. Hello, you're on. Awesome. Okay, Yay. cool. Hey. Thank you, Bryce. Boom, 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 boom. Um, so we were just talking about that episode of Quantum Leap where yeah. they ripped off word, note for note, uh, Good Morning Vietnam, doing, only in Peoria. Super relatable material. <laughs> oh, yeah. That dude. one episode By of Quantum way, Leap that ripped off another movie that's 30 years old. Yeah, but oh, you realize what I have teed up after this. Uh, we're going to bleed this dry. Yeah. Then we're going to start doing parody music as we wait for our guest, Andrew Heaton, by saying, He ends on. <laughs> He's <laughs> on the show. <laughs> The pressure's oh. high <laughs> He's when you realize Yoko. <laughs> L.A. is hideous yeah. is the name of his book. He's, got a, he's on a media tour, a, a legit media poems. tour. I, I, you know what? Stops. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's literally doing an interview out there in the back. In the woods. <laughs> yes, in the woods. In the woods. Yeah. And that's why he's – that's why – I'm, not I'm communing on. with the forest gods, so I can let everybody know that Andrew Heaton's new book, L.A. is hideous. <laughs> Los Angeles City. L.A. is ugly dot com. Uh, yeah, dude. Um, All I, reviews left for Andrew Heaton's book that are from this show's fan base needs to include the word Peoria. Peoria. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It ne- so when you review it, do book, Peoria next. <laughs> yeah. It won't play in Peoria. Yeah. But we like it anyway. So do not do anything that's similar. You, you don't have to drop show references. Oh, Five I think stars I see. I think I saw somebody Peoria in there. And no but, one ever say that to him. Yeah. He no, just, nobody he mentioned. Says, let no it, let it be a puzzle. Yeah. Uh, he's not reading every review as they come in because I quoted one of them and he was like, what's that? And I'm like, it's a review. The hey, heat hey, is on, hey, on the street. Hey. Did you get his beer? Uh, you yeah, had his beer. You were, you were, you were, yeah, you were, I'll be, I'll be, BRB. Yeah. I'll be our beer. Well, yeah. Beer I, I, beer. I thought you might, I thought you might have I did, it with I, you. Yeah. I, I brought I it. Well, I didn't want it to get warm. All right. Hold on. All right. What is this bit that you like to do? Uh, is, 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 is Corey's, Corey's bit is the gawker. Uh, it's, uh, okay. Okay. Do, do, do you remember that fame, that famous photo of, of Tiger Woods, uh, where, where he hits and the guy happened to get the photo just after he swings and the ball is in midair, but all anyone sees is a fucking jackass wearing a turban and a giant fake mustache yeah. in the background. Is that, is that the bit we're doing? Okay. All right. I'm going to go get a beer. All right. Brian's getting a beer. Welcome to the green room, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, beer options. Uh, uh, no IPA. There's two IPAs. One of them has the word citrus on it. Don't want that one. Yeah. <laughs> Hate citrus and beer. So what did I miss in the green room so far? Uh, uh, well, we, you were we, out in the woods doing an interview. We know that. Yeah, we said that you're on a media tour, which yes, is true. That's true. And yes. that you're late for the green room because you were doing another media hit, communing with the forest god. That is, and I, are, I was, I, look, it, it, it was, it was a good but intense day, and I decided to take a break, walking around the woods, as is my want, stacking rocks in decorative ways in the, the woods behind, thank you, behind uh, Brian's house, and uh, am, I think, a lot more What is that word? You keep saying the Japanese Shinren word. Shinren-yoko. 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 Yeah, and then, and, no, that's what Ryu says, right, before he attacks. Shinren-yoko. <laughs> that's the spinny one that he does. I, okay, so did you guys ever play Magic the Gathering? Oh, yeah. yeah. Are you kidding? Right. Right, 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 right. So, okay. I, I, I know very little about it. I only played a little bit, but I know this. I know there's different kinds of mana. I know that there's plains, mountains, forests, and beaches or water. And I am 100% a forest mana guy. I 
draw my magical powers from forests. From forest. It's like how like like Dracula has to like sleep in the earth of his native Transylvania to, to reclaim his powers. I'm the same way with trees. I got to wander around trees and pet a dog, and then I come back to like full heat mode. Uh, also, so I, dogs today. So though, to, uh, uh, to, uh, two things. Uh, I cannot. This is like a, a hardwired like uh, this, uh, metaphor incoming. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, 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 you can see it on the... oh, okay. Si oh, sim good. Similar to how a, a doctor, you know, just reflexively, you can't help but kick. Uh, I cannot let anyone ask me about Magic the Gathering without saying out loud. I played with black borders alphas my first year of college. I gave away my entire set, including a black lotus. And then this is the part everyone screams. I can't believe it. Um, but then the, uh, uh, but also I think you missed my my. Uh, I was trying to be subtle about it, but uh, I was pointing. Did you see what I was pointing at? Looks like the 8.6 percent alcohol. I just want you to know the yeah, speed yeah. limit going in. Oh, that's good. And yes. I haven't had any dinner, so this is this yeah. Is good okay. For me to the, know. They, they, okay. Got it. Uh, so, uh, how wait, 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 many? Hold on. Alpha. alpha but I, I felt my virginity partially grow back as you just. <laughs> so the very first set, or maybe yeah, the very first set before they had uh, uh, when before they even had like beta versions or final editions or whatever, as they were working it out. Uh, they, they had what they called black bordered alphas, which were the very, very first ones you could get that went to a few comic shops. And Austin being Austin was, you know, uh, I developed an addiction very fast. And um, that part I was fine with. The part that I was not fine with was it started to break friendships. <laughs> and so I gave I gave them all to my brother, uh, including the Black Lotus, which is a single card that is. Wait, hold on. People are saying right now in the chat room, the Black, the, the black Lotus is damn near a half million dollar. Card. That is correct. That is 100% correct. When I gave it away, within a couple of years, it was worth like uh, thousands of dollars, then tens of thousands should, of dollars. Should I check on my uh, prodigious amount of Star Trek customizable card game cards? Is it possible they've raised in value? Uh, you know what? I held on to all my Star Wars customizable card games, and I can assure you, they have not. <laughs> <laughs> but but yes, that, that that's that's no, no bullshit. There is... was definitely a moment during the pandemic when all the 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 value on those were going up uh -huh. that i was like because i had comic cards that was my big thing and so like i'm like mm, what about like the, the the full collection of my comic cards and it's like like i see the percentage up 150 percent, and i'm like holy shit i'm in the money 30 dollars. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i'm like well that's worthless so, so um i i bought the first time i went to europe when I was uh, 19, I bought a bottle of wine, a dessert wine. And I was like, I'm going to open this when I publish my first book. And I take, I took that with me to like three different cities over 10 years. And I had my first book come out. And I was like, now this, now I open this dessert wine. I wonder how much this is worth. Because when I bought it, it was Oh, you did check. You did check. I checked and it had dropped from $28 to like $16. <laughs> also, it had spoiled. It was like rotten milk. It was okay. It was okay. But it's like, that's also one of those reasons. Like when I turned 30, I bought like a $200 bottle of scotch. Yep. And I, I mentioned it to my dad. And he's like, uh, how much does Monkey Shoulder run for? Monkey Shoulder at the time was $20. And he's like... So it's 10 times better than Monkey Shoulder? And I was like, it's slightly better than Monkey Shoulder. He's like, you should have bought 10 bottles of Monkey, Monkey Shoulder. <laughs> Dude, if, if, if nothing else, the, the biggest lesson I took away from the um, uh, whiskey course at the Wizard Academy was that um, uh, freaking uh, price is an indication of rarity, not quality. And uh, yeah. uh, like, like uh, we, 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 uh, uh, Having had a sip of a two thousand dollar bottle of, of whiskey, I'm just like, Egh. and he's like, yeah, right, and you're like, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah I got, I came into uh, uh, ownership of a, a, a bottle of whiskey for which, when I googled the the price, I was I was uh, shocked and disgusted that it was like in my that I had like mixed it with Coke earlier that oh, day. Oh no. <laughs> kind of thing yeah it's just like, like like looking into a youtube video as you dead-eyed pour coke into a thousand dollar i will actually say that, though, yeah will that, say that though, would be a good it, stunt it totally that should be a fun challenge <laughs> that would be uh, or burning rare you can, you can power small yeah. cities with the no yeah, that <laughs> yeah pouring coke into the most expensive whiskey available i i i, I think eye to the camera what? i i think man i wonder i wonder if they've already done that over on the whiskey tribe channel that sounds like something they would definitely do but it also seems like something that would provoke uh, you know irredeemable rage in certain segments so, so you're we're talking like a Pappy van winkle and coke Is yes that, yeah Oh my God! When we have them on, yep. When we have them on, that'll be what we make them do. Secretly, no. Secretly, that'll be like behind the scenes. 
we'll mix the like super expensive whiskey and coke and add it to them i was like oh just try this it's like, no, it's like, a like fun thing. Ooh, yeah ooh, yeah. Uh, yeah we know we know we know you know your whiskeys uh yeah. do you know this whiskey and uh and then that you. yeah do you know it behind a coke like yeah. like with, with the kimono on and then it's like uh no i, th I think it's this type this type or whatever and then it's like that is a the bottle next thing you know they're <laughs> in the shower like the crying game like, <laughs> 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 they, they, they did a um they did a really interesting study a few years ago where they hooked people up to an ekg monitor and they uh, they went. We're we're going to ask you to sample this glass of wine, and just tell us like how how good it is on a scale of one to ten. And like they did it, and then they came back and they're like, uh, "You lucked out." Like we actually had a donor that found out about the program, and he has a giant wine cellar. And so we were going to give you like twenty dollar bottle of Shiraz. This is a bit, like this is a like three hundred dollar bottle. So like we were we weren't planning this, but you can have it. And it was the exact same wine. Yep. And yeah. Not, not only did people reported that it tasted better, but they weren't lying either because the EKG indicated that their taste buds had activated more. Yeah. But like there was actually like, it did literally taste different because the anticipation altered the experience. The, I used to get real beefy about like, you know, Coke versus Pepsi one being better than the other or whatever. And then uh, in this book, the 22 immutable laws of marketing, uh, they flatly state like, hey, uh, everyone thinks they like Coke better, even though Pepsi wins every trial. Uh, so Pepsi is really? is empirically better. Now, later, I've, I've since found out that people have tried to reproduce the results, and they figured out that it is better upon the first few sips, but then eventually uh, it becomes too sweet. What are we looking Wait, for? What's up? I, I keep getting comments about nobody can hear me. Oh. But I was also, I wanted to make sure I was going to knock over the phantom beard that you all have left like a landmine on the uh, yeah. dude i i saw in the chat somebody said like anxiety 110 yeah, 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 yeah. about that beer on the on the floor if i talk this loud can you all hear me you could also eat the mic a little bit yeah okay but I uh know. but 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 uh the story apocryphal though it may be uh and misremembered as it almost certainly is is that they uh, hooked people up to an MRI machine and they had them drink both Coke and Pepsi. Uh, and in a blind taste test, uh, both times the taste receptors lit up uh, in, in the brain, right? Uh -huh. And then they said what they, whether they liked A or B or whatever. But then in, in the other one, they were told that uh, which is which. And in the case of the, the, the Coke study, if I remember correctly, both the taste and the memory receptors lit up in the brain, which is to indicate that all of that marketing, all of that sitting on the porch with grandpa, Americana and sales messaging actually affected the taste. And all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, it, it, taste is bullshit and, and, and malleable and, and whatever. It's all dumb brown water. And I stopped being a baby about uh, uh, Taco Bell <laughs> having Pepsi. Only having Pepsi products. Yeah. We were talking about this on, I think, your Patreon the other day when we were talking about Britney Spears, mm -hmm. of the Britney Spears Pepsi Super Bowl commercial. That's like all wrapped around oh, right. the idea. Oh, right. Yeah, I forgot about that. that like, Bob Dole, yeah. Yeah. And then it, like, so it's like everybody's like, like, oh, Britney Spears is so great. And it's all these people like stopping traffic and a short order cook who's like, you know, the grill is on fire because he can't stop watching the Britney Spears Super Bowl commercial. And then it ends with Bob Dole just going like, that's great. Like Pepsi. <laughs> and uh, then he does a backflip. And then, well, no, <laughs> he, no, he's literally just sitting there. And the the joke is, which you lose if you weren't there in the moment, you don't remember this one fact that Bob Dole had been in the news because he endorsed Viagra. Yes. So literally the joke of the end of the Pepsi commercial is Bob Dole popped a boner yep. <laughs> watching this ad. Uh -huh. And then he just like winks and catches another check because he's fucking Bob Dole and <laughs> yeah. he's the best. There, there was like a five-year period of glorious political figure. Like, do you remember like Gorbachev did a Pizza Hut commercial? Do you remember that? I yes. do. Oh my God. The Soviet fucking Union yeah. did a Pizza Hut commercial. Yay, America. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Capital. I mean, look. I mean, in, in his defense, uh, a motherfucker didn't introduce Glassnose. He was just like, "Yeah, man, why don't we uh, look a little bit westerly yeah. here?" Glassnose and let's drink way more. I yeah. need to pay for my <laughs> liquor. Uh, did Did you ever see Chernobyl, the HBO oh, series? Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was a great, great series. Yeah, dude. Uh, Half a minute. The, I oh, no, you. Uh, great, well, hilarious. if. if uh, all right. <laughs> no, yeah. Is that... uh, specifically, was just that the way, because he, they kept, he had like all the different people in his head, and they were talking. That's Herman's head. Oh, I knew. It. You know what's funny? Herman's fucking, head. fucking. I don't normally leave you hanging. I fucking do exactly <laughs> what you were referencing, and I left your ass hanging, hanging. That was so. That wasn't Chernobyl. <laughs>
No. Uh, oh, uh, right. you, okay. you know the, the, the main uh, upper cheek in that one, like the head of the transportation or whatever that comes down and saves the day? Yeah. In real, yeah. In real life, that guy. Scott yeah. Bakula. Scott Bakula. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scott Bakula. See, Scott Bakula. I could do it too. Yeah. 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 Good morning, in, Peoria. In real life, when he left the Chernobyl site there after, I don't know, a week or whatever, um, the scientists were like, okay, everybody that was involved here, it's very important that we like shave your head. Uh, yep. Because your your hair and like your hair is radioactive. He refused to do it because he thought that it was improper. It was improper conduct for a member of the Politburo. So he, he consented to a minor touch up job on a haircut, but he wouldn't have him shave his head, and he died from cancer. No his, kidding, his from his own radioactive hair. Yes, his radioactive hair killed him. Yeah, fucking dumbass. Yeah, <laughs> what an idiot. He was a radium boy, right? Yeah, there. that's a shit. true radium boy. Wow. Well, I, mean, I mean, like, but fucking also, congratulations, you played yourself. Yeah. But in Russian, fifty percent <laughs> chance he would have had a superpower. Fifty percent sure. chance he would die. That's how most copper books start. Uh, okay, so before before you you arrived, we were. Uh... <laughs> Don't <laughs> 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 fast. That was pretty good. Um, the, uh, uh, but uh, before you arrived, uh, the, we were talking about how you are very charitable with your time, energy, and effort, uh, for, for volunteerism. And we were talking about, um, uh, the fact that, 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 that you spent time in Vietnam and we were questioning whether or not you get to say, you know, back when I was in Nam, yeah, like, like, do, do you say that? Back in Nam. Back yeah, in, yeah, oh, yeah. You actually did serve in Nam. He, he you in you Nam. volunteered. Well, yeah. well, I was a waiter when I was there. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I, I volunteered a lot in Thailand because I went to two different elephant sanctuaries. Too much. You went too far. I never volunteered. Okay, he's too good, isn't it? I did. I did nothing altruistic in Vietnam. Vietnam, I just wandered around looking at cool stuff. I did get to hang out with three literate hill tribes, but I wasn't volunteering with them. I was just chilling. You made them pay. They're like, I would like to talk to you, and you're like, how much are you? Throw it in the lake for my amusement. We were also talking about, with just a just reference, is my kids at some point started to heckle me, and 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 I I think I I don't know how we got there. It's we. Yeah, of just heckling people by shouting, do better, <laughs> do and, be better, which was very funny at the time, less funny in the intervening six months, where oh. at, whenever I say or do something they don't approve of, <laughs> they just shout at me, do better. That was, it, was, it was such a big shock for me when I started doing stand up in Scotland, because in, in America, stand up's very convivial. The, the relationship between the audience and the comedian is like we're we're rooting for you. We're all having right. a good time well, here right. tonight. Uh, Let's, like, yeah. yeah and, and generally like 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 I've been in a lot of uh, uh, nights where like there's a new comedian. They'll come out and be like this this is his first time and, and like the audience truly does give this doomed individual a, a good attempt. <laughs> yeah. And in Scotland the goal is to knock you off your perch. And that's Glasgow, yeah, that is, right? Well, when in Glasgow they stab you. <laughs> Glasgow's like can you be funny while bleeding and can you take out the bouncer in a fist fight? <laughs> While drinking a pint of penance with broken glass, and yes. that goes a whole other flavor. Sure. But the, the the rest of the time, it's like part of the fun is they're they're lobbing verbal hand grenades at you, and you are ruining their life with cutting remarks, and that's considered nice. like just. And a, so that's what your that's your worth work. is is that yeah. people are stepping into the arena, and you're funnier than them. Yeah, so it's you're a thunder drawing kind them. of thing. Yeah. yeah. And then the other weird bit is it's like like our so our standup came complete like a hundred percent came out of vaudeville, so right. it's set up punch yeah. set up punchline. Scottish stand up, like, kind of imported our vaudeville, but it has this weird, like, Celtic storytelling thing where it's like, oh, joke, punchline, joke, punchline. And here's an interesting anecdote about Tobermory. I'll talk to you for any. And then, like, if you're American, you're like, what did I just have a stroke? What happen? Why is no one telling jokes? They're like, shut the fuck up. I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I like it. He talks about his aunt. <laughs> So, uh, so is is the con do do they uh, pursue the conceit that this is a, a casual conversation that just happens to be a long form story that they're telling, or 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 like like in other words, is there kayfabe of some variety? Is there what kayfabe? K kayfabe, like uh, 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 how wrestlers uh, uh, they're kayfabe. pretending that it's real. So, so like, is, yeah. it, is it like, like in 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 American stand up where you are kind of in this conceit that you're like like. Like oh, like, I'm just like, oh, like, yeah. Like, yeah. I was having sex with my got, girlfriend like, this morning. Yeah, this morning, yeah. I did, yeah. I, I like I wandered out. I wandered out of my dressing room, and you all happened to be here. And I thought of something. We're gonna do stand up in a minute, but I thought of something yeah. funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and then like after that, half an hour, is that an American very tight <laughs> surgical stand up? Yeah. You're like, 
I guess I should do the show now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's the world over because that's just like that's good audience work of tricking people into thinking you're funnier than you are. Yeah. Like that's like like if I go to a party and they're like, you do comedy? It's like they tell me a joke and I'm like, I've been running through my whole set with you for the last 20 minutes yeah. to get your pants off. I just didn't tell you. <laughs> yeah. That. yeah. So you thought I'd be funny, but of course I've run all these jokes before. I'm embarrassed how long it took for me to realize that. Mm -hmm. And I've been a funny person all my and, life. And it, and it was just like Oh, you mean you actually have to put that shit together? The, the, the first time I ever did it was at the Looney Bin Club in Oklahoma City, and I and my my lodge. I didn't like. I didn't know anybody that was in comedy. I knew farmers and attorneys. Those were all of my people growing up, and I literally thought I'm funny at parties. I'll walk on stage and jokes will come to me, like at parties, you know, where everyone knows who I am and people are talking to me back and forth. Yes. And I can be witty and parlay off of them, and I uh, like blacked out. Uh, <laughs> don't and remember the rest could, of that I, night. I couldn't like, and I said some joke because like I hadn't even drank yet. Like I'd had one hangover in my life. Now I've had many hangovers, <laughs> but at the time I'd had okay, one hangover, at, and I was like, "Look at Johnny hangover yeah, was, over here, I was bragging was about it." Hung over from Mike's Heart Lemonade, which was the only laugh I got that entire night, and I didn't and, understand and the laugh why. Was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was yeah. It. yeah. I just like left off stage, like my testicles came back oh, into my body. Yeah. Didn't try to get for several funny years because I feel so badly for it. Oh, <laughs> it's it is when you bomb. It is so like I I don't know how it is in other in other other mediums. But like I the, the, the last time I truly bombed, I was in D.C. and I was kind of beginning intermediate. And I did this. What like it, I wasn't prepared for this. I did a joke where I went. I'm not going to go into stand up mode. But the, the joke is like uh, whenever I meet a woman, like she tells me very quickly that she's either in a relationship or doing yoga. It's very important <laughs> for women to know that they're for me to know that they're flexible or spoken for. And this woman in front of me loses it. Just lo like funniest thing she's ever heard. And it's so distracting that I forget my entire set, and I oh, stumbled through no. for like five minutes of just mumbling. And when I when I walked off the stage, one of the comedians who could not make eye contact with me went, "Hey, man, uh, <laughs> you really articulate." And I was like, <laughs> "Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ!" I, oh, Just spit I, like, me in the nose. I, I, oh. like, I like bought a beanbag discount and hit on for two and a half days. Oh, it felt so horrible! Good God. No, I always in in, in the very limited stand up that I did, uh, uh, I always just got too angry at the audience while I was bombing. <laughs> like, Come on! Like, no, no, no. I would just so I would start explaining the jokes, and then I would start punishing them by continuing to explain the jokes <laughs> because they just became like, oh, well, you don't love me, so I don't love you, right? And now I'm gonna waste your time. Mm -hmm. So what I was trying to do there was set up a thing. <laughs> oh like, no! Yeah. The, the, it was, I, I don't have a good relationship. Conversely, the, the, the best worst room I've ever had. I got a, I got a phone call in New York, like maybe six months before I left, and the Pitt Comedy Club called me, and they're like, "Our guy dropped out. Can you please come, like, parachute in and do comedy?" And I was like, "Yeah." And they're like, "It's not a big room. Is that okay?" And I was like, "That's fine." There were three people in it in this entire <laughs> room, and to the Pitt's credit, they had like put a velvet rope on the second row, so you had to sit up front. Yeah. So right. I came out and was like. Oh, hey, I'm Andrew Heaton. Hello. And I shook hands with everybody. And two of them were French. They'd never been to a stand up oh, show. Oh, no. And they left and they, they came up there like, that was uh, wonderful. I had never, like, I guess comedy, they come and say hello to you. <laughs> you uh, wait, which, which by the way, uh, I, 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 you know, 20, 20 years of college touring uh, tells me that, that, that you cracked the code. There is a. There is a magical number below which nobody wants to volunteer for anything in a magic yeah. show, which is problematic in a magic show where you mm -hmm. need every single thing needs right, to volunteer, yes. right? Uh, and and above a certain number, everybody wants to volunteer. Sim similar with laughing out loud or whatever. So uh, uh, what I would do is like if 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 I saw and again the people who are putting on these events, they're student volunteers. Maybe they're not experienced marketers. Maybe they didn't feel like you know, do, doing anything more than printing out a fucking magic wand on a top hat and saying magic show Thursday. Yeah. Uh, and five people, <laughs> like nine people show up at which point, like, like, uh, uh, before the show, it's, it's, it's less painful to one at a time, 15 minutes beforehand say something amazing is about to happen. I'm Brian Brushwood. What's your name? And you're, from where? Okay, great. Yeah, they're yeah. like, normally there are many, many more people, but what we're going to, and then you're like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play pretend like we're a whole bunch of people. It will be totally fake when you all yell and scream, but then something magical will happen. It will begin to feel real to you. And then, and then it's like, and it's like, I feel like I'm such a, a shabby fraud. And I'm sad because I'm calculating 
what I'm being paid for the gig and dividing it by nine. Yeah. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> You're all <laughs> worth two thousand dollars. <laughs> right. <laughs> all a very this is a VIP audience. room. Yeah. Yeah. You were the fluffer for your own, cr own but crowd. But at basically. least once the show begins, there's there. some kind of momentum yeah. because yeah. otherwise you will never get them. You will never no. get them yeah. uh, unless you you go through that pain. I will freely admit that I was always afraid to do stand up. I can do improv. I can do theater. I can. I can MC, uh -huh. and but I uh, just thinking that I was gonna have to write out a whole thing. I have like maybe five jokes that I've always kept. That I go if ever, then I'll do it. But, but uh, uh, the, I skipped bombing by going on stage for as an MC and saying to I'm gonna bomb so hard. Oh, nice. In front of these people. You watch. Right. I'm gonna bomb and on purpose. Which which is a very stand up comedian thing to do because stand up comedians. Don't want you. We want you to laugh at me when I when I cue you to. Yeah. Yes. We don't want you to laugh at me because I have done something wrong. We, yep. we desperately it's avoid a that very situation. Fragile. Yeah. And, and, and there's and a it, lot of is, really damaged people. And yeah. And it no. become it became a one percenter joke to where <laughs> the people who knew I was about to bomb were crying because of how hard I was bombing. Stand up comedians and professional wrestlers uh, are the two art forms for which. There is a tremendous difference between the on stage and the off stage in general, from yes. my personal experience. Yep. Like actors, about what you might expect, but like that's because the glamour of it is part of it. So there's an element of just like, oh, like I, I, I am a person for which you are turning your head for. They're the most popular, pretty people in their high school. They're used to being a a, a person that is that is that. Uh, unless you're in the 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 uh, uh, Pat Oswald Brian Dennehy right. <laughs> character actors, who gives a fuck if we're fat? Hey. Uh, uh, but then uh, a stand-up comedian specifically, it's just like, like uh, uh, especially right after a show, if you're just like like hey man like that's great you're jazzed you they've just made you laugh so hard and you come and meet them with that energy and it's like diving out of a helicopter <laughs> into a canyon. Yeah, they're just like. Yeah. 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 Well, because cool. there's there's like a like a post sex like like lull like you you've you've been blasting. No, out it's all this not energy. post sex. It's post. I just jerked off for the fifteenth time today, <laughs> and, and I'm wondering if I fucking also have money in for the rent. Like yeah. that's that's the level of depression that that, yeah, that well, stand up comedians like, have. Like, improv is so different because like I've done improv and stand up, and like improv. You're on a stage with a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got your back. And when it does bomb, you leave and you're like, that was horrible, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Want a beer? And like, you have like, you have a built in support group yes. that's getting you through it. Yeah. Whereas with stand up, you're like, am I too old to be an attorney? Yeah. Why <laughs> like, am how, I? How much yeah. does rope cost? Am improv I improv is also kind of a cult. Like, yeah. there's kind of an element of like, like, oh, well, we've all followed the sacred text. So, right. like, yes. like, like, oh, we, we just need to follow the sacred text better. Everybody put on your hair shirts and, yes. and, and, and we, we will all have our Dell Close recitations as uh, we <laughs> yes and into the night. I'll tell you what, man, that is one of the best parts of, of, having uh, uh, done my time uh, uh, on tour for the college circuit, because, like, if you shat a show, fucking. See ya. <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. I'll be in Kansas tomorrow. <laughs> like, I, I don't give a rat's ass. Uh, whereas, like, all the people who are coming up in comedy who have to go to the same club every Tuesday night or whatever, and and it's gonna, and they see some of the same faces, and it's like I, all I can imagine is if you have a show that bombs, I, I I could never get through my set without looking down and recognizing a face, and then having, and, and I'm like, they know. Yeah, <laughs> that's, especially that's all I would fixate on. Oh, okay. No, just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that is a good thing about the internet is people, even if you bomb, you don't see them. Like, yes, you see like a, an empty chat room maybe, but like, you're you're not you're not you're not living that visceral. Yeah, I gotta moment. say, like like a Zoom like, stand up with six people doesn't seem as bad. Like it like I it, it, it wouldn't feel the same, but it, it also wouldn't feel like like oh I'm in a stadium with six people in it. Yeah. No. I yeah. Mean, yeah. I would imagine Zoom stand up feels like fucking a milk carton. Like right. calling I it don't, sex, but yeah. like uh, uh, I, I don't, I don't imagine that it would be that painful. <laughs> you know, as long as you fold the cardboard in, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Uh, we, I, I, I didn't know this, but we have a, a, a guest uh, who uh, Heaton will recognize, who is on property. So I'm going to let them in, and and you can uh, see see them. Uh, 
uh, or or they, there could be a bar fight out there, I guess. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that was, that's there's, that's there's kind a, of unexpected. Uh, now I'm afraid to open the door. The door. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm really excited slapping to find and out who this is. And... <laughs> is it uh, Geraldo? No. Uh, uh, all right, hold on. Brian's going to get our, our special guest on guest on guest on guest. Uh, I used to hang uh, out with Geraldo a couple times. He's a very friendly guy. Is super, he? super happy. I, uh, also, he owns an island and might be the horniest man I've ever met. So, fun story. Uh, I heard uh, I was friends with somebody that worked on uh, 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 what's the dancing competition? Dance World's with greatest stars. con. <laughs> Not world's greatest con. <laughs> uh, dancing with the stars, uh, where it is legendary that the stars fuck. They're right. dancers. Right. Like, right. That's yeah. a thing that yeah, happens yeah, yeah. like all the time. And apparently it was so well known that when Geraldo was on it, his wife was just on set oh, every day. Which one? Oh, hey. How are you, man? <laughs> I, I'm, so, I'm so happy it's you. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Uh, uh, are we going to introduce our guest? Nope. Uh, uh, well, it's 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 a, a friend, a longtime friend of the show, uh, who I believe, uh, 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 Richard. Uh, uh, can we introduce you to everyone? Uh, uh, this is Richard, who who uh, works over uh, at 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 the Whiskey Tribes Whiskey Place. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, he's one of the. Uh, you, you ever get that feeling where it's like you let someone into uh, your world and you're terribly afraid that they're not going to like it? Uh, yeah. Richard is that delightful counter example where like richard went all in in hedonism <laughs> ah. <laughs> actually hedonism uh, y- you have to have stumbled on, have you, on have that you, have you run with that uh, like be, being a hedonist or yeah I like that. well like like uh um uh, uh, occasionally like the discord channel that i have he- heaton's heathens right and, yeah. and occasionally like, i'm like yeah hedonism i feel i feel like i ought to do something with yeah, it. yeah. yeah. i mean i subscribe yeah. to hedonism. No, so really i mean yeah. to be honest you fucked up it's, 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 yeah right <laughs> now, like, just a lot of money left on the table yeah, yeah, right. I'm feeling it's a beat, uh, you know what else has scooped it up and i remain yeah. the most the second most preeminent heat so i can still take it <laughs> <laughs> actually that should be your uh when you when you finally have a conclave of everyone uh, like a convention you could call it uh, uh hedonism like a uh, he, you know, like uh, whatever yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, hi, Richard. It's good to see you. <laughs> uh, now he and I are back to back. We're like, yeah. There we go. I know, <laughs> now, now they're lethal yes. weapon. Crisscross, uh, where are they now? I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. Uh, I uh, love, by, by the way, that like uh, uh, Danny Glover was like 38 when like, <laughs> he did. Oh, oh, God. God. He is <laughs> so old. Oh, Jesus. Uh, it's like I saw that on the internet and then he's like he was like 38 when he did the first thing the weapon and he's just like oh, I'm too old for this shit <laughs> I know we're all like Riggs, shit. Riggs. <laughs> that's like I saw on like Twitter the other day that like, you, you you watch sports broadcast and they're like look at this athlete that football player is 40 years old medical science is a modern yeah. miracle <laughs> <We're> like, wait <laughs> what <laughs> Suddenly you start melting. Oh <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, no! It's, I, just, I mean, I, I, actually, that's that's kind of. I mean, not not for nothing. It's like uh, uh, being on the road doing the the you know escaping from a straight jacket is fairly athletic or whatever. I I I, I love the fact that we with the podcasting everything it, 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 that we're building out increasingly it's like eventually will be nothing but animated uh, faces and 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 manufactured like like we can get very old and still do this shit. I mean that that literally uh, that's, that's what, what's like, great about voice acting. And I, yeah, I like I'm like I'm pretty sure my voice will hold out for a very long time before it goes reedy. Also, I gotta say, like my weird quasi Victorian uh, look is only gonna make more and more sense yes. as I approach sixty. Oh, and, and like, and, like oh, we're gonna get no, you a top uh, hat. Yeah, we yeah. gotta get you a top hat. Oh, way, I've, I've got a top hat. Okay. I just I only wear it for special. Okay, I wanted to go. ask you a question that I think would fit well on 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 the green room in the first act. Uh, uh, you're a ring guy. Like you wear yeah. rings. I like right? rings. Yeah. What What is the most that you've gone? <laughs> ten. Uh, okay. So have you ever gone ten for ten on? No, rings? I did three the other day. I was I was marching in the Tulsa Gay Pride Parade. So and you had to I stack had, up. I I I had a turquoise show ring. These, show these a, boys a, who's boss. <laughs> I had a turquoise ring, a ring with a tree on it because I love forests. Big forest. Sure. Fan. I don't know if that came up. Mana. And, sure. and yeah, mana. And I and I had a Star Trek insignia. And yeah. I had a beautiful gold jacket. And I couldn't find the group I was going to march with, but one of my friends from college recognized me, and he's like, do you want to come with our synagogue? And I was like, great. So I found the rabbi, and I was like, hey, okay. I can't find my group. I'd love to march with you. I'm not Jewish, but I've been circumcised. And she's like, that's fine. 
you yeah. vlog with us. And I was like, yeah. So I, I marched. It was great. Great time. Did you over your, their head in a chair? <laughs> no, 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 it was over because yeah. we round a corner. They're like, and here's Temple Benai Tulsa. Yeah. And I'm like, hello. And I'm like waving like I'm the mayor of the Jewish days. <laughs> elbow, it was elbow, great. Wrist, I loved wrist, it. Wrist, wrist. So, all right. So, so you're max, you're maxing out three's at three. The, three's what three's I maxed out on you. But I feel like any more than that, you really need to be like a country music star, or Elton John, <laughs> no, to dude, have more no than toe three rings. No, no toe rings. rings don't count. I think we're just saying, I just want to see how far maybe. Uh, maybe an ear cuff. Can you put a? Can you rock an ear cuff? No, I don't think I. I think I think an ear, like an like an earring or no, something. That, like no, not an ear ring. Just that cuff? thing that wraps uh, around that just right. hangs on the yeah, side. Like with a Bajoran. Yeah, similar. Yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go with that. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna no, check your ball. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you're either <laughs> too effeminate for me. Says the guy wearing a gold, <laughs> yeah. or a, a gold jacket with wings and all. Too much, man. You're either you're either a barista or a rabbit being tracked for science. Like that's that's what the ear. You're either a barista or a pigeon. Yeah. Control room to the pigeons. Control room to the pigeons. You've got five minutes. Uh oh. What's up? Say say again. You've got five minutes. Five minutes. Hell's yeah. Five minutes. I feel like one day you can go ten for ten. Maybe I would like. Actually, I would like to that point. You do realize you just walk in ten for ten. I mean, look. Yeah, up to nine rings. You're a regular Joe, but with that tenth ring, according to the NCU, you become a terrorist. You become a terrorist. I mean, it's. It's the literal plot of Iron Man 2. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> the lead, yeah. And you're also a British actor. But the, the, so they can the, get the, away the, with the piece not having a Chinese character. The, the piece of jewelry I'm really sad about. So during lockdown. The, the <laughs> hold, one, on, hold on. Let me just sit with that phrase for a little bit. The piece of jewelry yeah. I'm really sad about. The piece of jewelry. So when I on lockdown, I bought a watchmaking kit and I built a watch. And pause. pause, but, pause. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I know that you have a book to plug tonight, but what you don't know is I'm writing a book <laughs> of just shit Heaton says. <laughs> the one he reminded me of was when he was in Oakland when we were doing politics stuff for the election. Uh, we would on Fridays we would take this like long walk and smoke cigars and drink beer, and uh, <laughs> you actually remembered it. Uh, uh, but he just stops and his face just goes full excitement and andrew heaton says unironically when you saw the tree is that myrtle wood <laughs> and grabs him out of it and went yes yeah, no, this. So, <laughs> no okay. grabs, like fucking scarface like like <laughs> checking to see if the cocaina <laughs> yeah, is good day. Just rips off the leaf crumbles it in his hands there with the go. expert mo motion yeah. for like, uh, efficiency and just goes it is Myrtle Wood. <laughs> so All right. Anyway, so anyway, he bought a fucking that, that, ironic, that, 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 Please keep these in the chat room. He bought a watchmaking kit. The uh, fucking, of course, chat room is already oh, claiming yeah. that we've hit peak Heaton. Uh, I, I, we have not yet begun to get Heatonistic. <laughs> we have not. We have not. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, so anyway, the jewelry so, that you're most so, sad so about. Say my, my, my watch uh, in the transport from California to Oklahoma. The faceplate came off and the the hand was damaged, so I had to send it in, and I'm hoping they can resuscitate. They can they can fix it because that okay. was cool to have a watch I made. Heaton, since you are an author and we do we are plugging uh, 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 your book tonight. La oh, is ugly dot com. Go uh, and and buy it right now. But what we are also doing every episode of Great Night is uh, uh, we write out the intro that Brett gives us when we walk Great. on the okay. stage. And so we've had our guests That's what uh, I'm doing uh, right help now. out. Okay. So if you if you could add a line, it, 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 do you have? Could be about third, sad oh, jewelry. Some. Could be oh, about Myrtle Wood. I want to <laughs> see if we can if you can just shoehorn in because sometimes a the last time the person said it, and I'm like, I already got it. So <laughs> I, let's see. You know, it's just me doing the introduction. Yeah. I mean, I, I was I thinking. I, don't he was just to going to, I, I always got to think he was just going to try it out, but you've now made it a competition. That, yes, that nobody can beat you in writing I, yeah I, absolutely right well, i have I, one job all right uh, uh, yeah, you're, you're like the america gladiators you're like zap <laughs> we're, we're, we're you're just like it. do you have what it takes to take me down uh uh well geez all right well, I, like, I thought we were gonna collaborate here but no. apparently our yes and is no fuck you <laughs> uh andrew heaton uh king of the jewish gays uh, <laughs> I'll take it. I'm uh, also, also, <laughs> Scottish gays also a big fan. I have to, I have to authority. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, are you, uh, dude, I, I'm so excited that you're here. How, how, uh, and we'll probably talk about this on the show. We only got like two minutes, but real quick, how, how's your media whirlwind going? Going well. I've done a bunch of shows. I did a uh, uh, frog pants this morning uh, with, yep. with Justin. CMS. And then, uh, Justin and I recorded an episode that'll come out on politics, politics. It's politics. I, I think probably the bonus episode tonight. tonight. Yeah. Yep. Uh, no, no, no. That's the main. Oh, was it a main episode? Main nice. Episode, yeah. uh, doing doing this. Uh, doing stuff in Dallas tomorrow, and then next week I'll be in. No, two weeks I'll be in New York, and then DC, and, and then Nashville. finally so I've, I've Los got a Angeles. Lot of stuff lined up. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I will, oh I will my god! This. I will give you a dollar I, right I've, now. I've started <laughs> getting comments from people in Los Angeles, and I feel I feel really bad. Like uh, there were a couple of groups that I hung out in briefly in LA before the lockdown happened. And I emailed them and was like, hey, like, I think you'll find this funnier than you find it offensive. Can I send it to you? And <laughs> one of them emailed me back and he went, hi, I read the first poem. And it makes me sad about all the things I don't like about here. So good luck. But I don't <laughs> want to read the rest. <laughs> and I was uh, like, oh, I'm like, it was, he was so nice about it. I felt kind of bad. There one hour ago there. via Twitter, <clears throat> my dad loved L.A. And he died there. And squatters took over the house and cooked meth. Probably murdered his roommate, too. They forged a deed and claimed dad had given them the house. I was happy to give it away just so their asses were on the street. I hate L.A. <laughs> <laughs> that was an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> was that I in Chernobyl? That was that was go. I, I do. I had the same thing. I saw that my dad loved L.A. Oh, I was like, oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> Somebody died yesterday. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, I don't know. The, 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 what, I've, what I've said a million times about uh, the, the concept of your book is that it is the absolute 100% always winning scenario. <laughs> like, everybody outside of L.A. hates L.A. Like other big cities close to L.A. Phoenix hates L.A. The mm. Bay Area hates L.A. And most of all, LA hates LA. It's LA. Yeah. Uh, it, Nobody it, you, likes You know what this LA. book is? This book is like a reverse Kobayashi Maru, <laughs> <laughs> where there's literally no, no way to fuck it up. It, it's a weird thing because in New York, people move from Oklahoma and Ohio, and then they, they spend two weeks in in Brooklyn, and then they're like, "This city, I yeah. love New York." Hey, we're like, oh, oh, hey. oh, look at me! I'm walking here. Yeah, I'm walking here. Where are you from? I'm from Stillwater. <laughs> LA, LA people have live there, raise kids there, and then their kids have raised there, and you're like, no, where are you I... from? And they're like, Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> like, they do, for whatever reason, man, it is a, it is a city that is uh, not there to be loved, but it is there to be mocked when you go to laisugly.com and buy Los Angeles is Hideous, a poem book by the master of hedonism himself. Yes. It, it, it is at this very moment, number 40 on Amazon for poetry. It's actually God damn. Doing, it's doing better in poetry than humor. Let's, so let's, number one. Oh, no, no, no. Let's make number it there. One. Yeah. Number, like, one. It. number one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe you have discovered our secret, which is soft targets. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out poetry, okay, humor competitive. The, poetry. The, 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 the next, the next jujitsu move I really want to do, the, the National Poet Laureate lives in Tulsa. Yes. And I want to interview her, seriously interview her, have a good interview. And be like, can you read a poem? Like, yes. And be like, did you know I'm a poet? <laughs> <laughs> well, I okay. do now. Oh, no. You're, like, you're, like, you're like, no, but I now know. These are equal quality. <laughs> <laughs> did you know I'm a poet? No, but now I know you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, 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 hello, uh, pigeon to control room, pigeon to control room. Hello, uh, control room. Uh, 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 yeah. How how are we on time, sir? Uh, you I mean, you guys call it when you want to call it, but uh... oh oh, well, well then yeah, let's wrap let's wrap it up. Uh, right. uh, yeah we will, yeah yeah. We, we will get ready. Uh, uh, head out on stage. We have a great show. Uh, Heaton's going to be on for the entire thing. And good friendship got... meeting, everybody. Good job. Yeah. Huh? Hey. Good job. Good job. Good good job. High quality friendship meeting. The log. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just come up with one word, and he's got to work that one word yeah. into the intro. Just one word. Just a good word that you like. Toots. Fancy. 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 Uh huh. Yeah. With two E's. Fancy toots. Compromise. Like it's a knockoff soda at Rite Aid. <laughs> God, I did not know a Black Lotus was four hundred fucking thousand dollars. Yeah, you fucked you're up. Right. Like, oh no, no, no. Like I've always known it, it, it was like a lot, but like I'm like a rabbit where anything past five is rare. <laughs> like I'm like, I don't know. A you lot less money on the table. Yeah. All right. All right. Whatever. I have real estate in Austin. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hello everybody, welcome back. To the Night Attack pre-show, I'm still Bryce Castillo, your pre-show navigator. Hello everybody. You got, uh... uh we got about, about ten minutes before we start the pre- before we start the show show. There we go. Hello everybody. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, of course, uh, don't forget about all the other great programming, uh, that we bring you here on Twitch.tv slash Night Attack every week. Like cord killers and weird things on Mondays. Of course, Friday Night Bryce on Fridays. Uh, every other week throughout the summer, we are doing marbles. Uh, so join us here. Make sure you got got us followed. You got your notifications turned on. Hello, everybody. Uh, we've got a little bit of time to do some birthdays or just check and see how everybody's doing here. Um, like Musical Chemist. Musical Chemist's nephew was born on Sunday. Happy birthday. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Uh, TSC and Sam's mom's birthday was on Saturday. Uh, there we go. Very cool. Happy birthday, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Glad that you can uh, spend uh, spend some of your time on Earth with us. Hello, everybody. We are uh, uh, getting started, getting ready here. I, uh... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little sore. I'm a little sore. I'm a little tired today. I'm trying today is today is like a mini a mini tea break day. Mini, today is like a like a mini tea break. Today's a little bit of a tea break for your boy. Sometimes sometimes you hit the booth a little too hard. You need to Ooh, you got to cool off. Ooh, you got to cool off. Anybody else taking a tea break right now? Cooling off of the Of course Eileen's birthday, Tom Merritt's wife was uh, her birthday was yesterday. Uh, RVJ's birthday is on Friday. No, we give birthdays for the previous week. Krug says, what type of tea? T-E-A. Well, well, uh, so. Mm. So. Um, but yeah, no, I'm still, I'm, we're, we're, I'm, in, I'm in Austin where we don't have um, recreational, but um, I do, I've, I've been using that hemp, that that the Delta Eight, the the weird fake hemp weed, it's mostly fine. I think it's mostly fine. Just weird. It's just weird. It feels like a a very different, a different type of product and outcome. I don't know. Has anybody else tried that that Delta Eight stuff? Is it just me. Does anybody even know what I'm talking? Does anybody even know what I'm talking? <laughs> <laughs> I see faux weed. Yes, yes, it's it's faux. It's fake weed. I had to like catch myself to not call it fake weed, uh, even though it definitely is. But yeah, it's um, uh, Beba Boop Science says they have no idea. Neil does not have any idea. ID4 says I'm speaking Greek. Really? So in in uh, the short version is in some states where uh, the normal THC is illegal. Uh, uh, the, the farm a farm bill that was passed a year ago um, plus the way that states classify weed um, uh, has left a gap for a, a slight variant of THC that is technically legal in like half, half the states something like that but they're finding they're finding ways they're finding ways to, to get around that like I know I know Texas Texas is looking at reclassifying so that Delta 8 gets counted as it that is an illegal THC. Oh well. But I got a little vape. I got a little vape thing. I got a little lightsaber. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, there's a there's a decent place. There's a decent place up uh, on research that I go to that uh, I think I think is is, a, is pretty good. Kind of a uh, home homemade down home, you know, local local thing. I don't know. Cause there are like there are like national brands too, but in any case, hello everybody, welcome to the Great Night Pre-Show. We've got uh, about seven minutes here. Let's see if anybody shows up on time, or if they're just gonna hang out in the window and try to mug and uh, distract me. Seems like they like distracting me a lot. <laughs> Hopefully, no selling him was good. Um, hello everybody. Uh, Krug says dry herb vape. Well, you can get herbs, but the way that they make herb is weird. They just take CBD. They just take, I, I believe, CBD flour or, or hemp, just flour. And no, it's, it's CBD flour and they spray it. They just spritz it. 
with like the the the, the, the weed juice. And so it's very sticky. Uh, in my in my expense getting it, it was like very, very sticky in a way that I did not love. I didn't love it. I mean, because I got a little, I got a little dry vape. I got a little manual vape. And it's, it was too sticky. It's too sticky. Yeah, because they just spray the, they just spray the weed syrup on it. Syrup. Like it's fucking, this is Fields. And this is Fields weed syrup. Oh my goodness. Um, hello everybody. Uh, I'm gonna get, I want to give a, a few shouts outs, um, uh, to, especially to T2 and Cheeto, our friends, who, uh, are keeping some of the infrastructure, the backend stuff, uh, plugging away. But T2, T2 make, like, built this really awesome, um, program that, that, cuts up the episode right after we finish recording it and so just send it to cheeto pretty much all edited up as long i'll cut up if we don't have edits i think uh, i i think he's got it available for free on uh, on our discord discord.greatnight.tv called the pod night i think it's in our um content creation channel i believe maybe uh maybe somewhere else but um uh but it's great he's he's they, 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 both of them, are fantastic, and they are how you get your episodes so fast. So, so fast. So, thank you to both of them for their hard work. Um, let's see. MDTA says, it's good to know Cheeto's still around. His social's been quiet for years. Yeah, you know, I think he's just busy behind the scenes and plugging away, making videos, you know? Um, I know I've seen him in the chat more now that we've had an earlier... Uh, an earlier time slot. He's been in the, the Discord a little bit more too, which is always good. It's always good seeing, always good seeing Cheeto around. I've met. I, I feel like I've met. I must have met Cheeto in person three, maybe three or four times now. He's such a nice. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. You can't say nothing about it, bad about him. Can't you can't and you can't say nothing bad about him. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, uh, there's, we, you know, we've got, we've got Cord Killers, the Cord Killers program here on Mondays, cordkillers.com. And, uh, we watch, um, uh, we you know, we're watching some shows for, it's spoiler in time. So we, it's like a book club kind of program. And, uh, between, between Black Widow and, uh, and Loki, and then what's our Rick and Morty, like we're, we're pretty, we're pretty busy with like decent, pretty, pretty good shows, I think. I think uh, even Tom mentioned maybe in the after show or in um, in in the after talk segment, which only goes to patrons, patreon.com slash court killers. Um, he was saying we may not need a library show for a little while, for at least a few months. Uh, you know, Fearless Freep is asking what's after Hannibal, which is our library show, which we didn't even do this week because we also had Black Widow come out. Um, but we may not have a library show for a minute. Because there's so many good shows, right? Lower Decks is coming back. What We Do in the Shadows is coming back. Uh, I want to say Fargo is somewhere in the mix, but that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. Oh, Condor says Rick and Morty Season 5 is decent to kind of mediocre for me. Interesting. You know, it's... Remember after Season 1 or Season 2 when, when Turner just said... One, we're, we're literally ordering 100 episodes from you. Please, the next 10 years, give us 100 episodes. And so you, you know what? It, they can't all be maudlin. They can't all be death and, uh, and suicide and depression. It can't be. You know, sometimes you just gotta have a, sometimes you just gotta have an episode that is just about sentient, sentient semen or so. <laughs> They're trickling in, trickling in. Hey, what's up? What's going on? What's going on? Hey. Hey. What's up? What's up? What's up? We're we're just hanging out here, getting ready for uh for the show. Oh. How you how do you how did you are you watching Rick and Morty? I am watching Rick and Morty. How are you feeling about this season? I I liked the last episode. Yeah. I think it was a good it was a return to that kind of episode which they've done mm -hmm. a couple times. Um, I was not a fan of Planetina. Really? I wanted Planetina to go different places. Ah, uh, I see. Because I liked, I really liked the idea of like what happens to the Planeteers 
when they like, grow up. Yeah. yeah, and I like the idea that she was like this faceless, empty vessel politician, mm. and then it just kind of became a love thing. And then they yeah. like they went they went like, all right, she's an eco terrorist, but then they never really like called that or like. Oh yeah, her. they did. She just like leaves. She just leaves, she just and leaves. also they don't. They establish the idea that she could be unmade because uh-huh. the kids can unmake her, oh, right. and that's how they controlled her. But they didn't even put it in Morty's hands when he had the ring. Yeah, that is so, like, weird. oh, d- should he unmake her? I wonder if that's gonna come back because uh, spoiler alert, as if we haven't already been. But I think next, this coming episode is a continuation of last week, or as a continuation oh, of really? of this most of recent the incest episode. baby. Yeah, yeah, is my understanding. Uh, well, I'm for it. Mm, there we go. Fucking A, Rick and Morty. There we go. Thank hey, you for. Hey, this is a take that no male aged 15 to 45 has ever had. Rick and Morty number one. <laughs> there we go. All right, I'm taking a look around, see who is all here. We do. We have, uh, we have some folks in the audience. We got guests. We got crew members hanging around, which is all fantastic. Um,. But yeah, so we'll just take another 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 minute here or so. Make sure that. Uh... Oh. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for joining me here on your great night pre-show. We will uh, start the show here in just a minute. Um, some last things. Remember doghousesystems.com slash rogue. Use promo code rogue. We'll get you a free hard drive when you buy our computer there. They're great. We love them. And then. Uh, patreon.com slash great night of course your support has made it such that you get the pre-show and the after show here uh as soon as possible all in one feed all in the same day so everybody thank you again for all of your support all right i'm i'm, I'm taking I'm taking a look around seeing if i can meet anybody's eyes see how everybody's doing we're all kind of getting situated getting settled folks are getting getting seated um yes Right, Justin. We're okay. We're gonna we're gonna see how everybody's doing. Justin, you're good to go. Fucking He's lit. fucking lit. Brian, you good to go? Yes, sir. Brett, you good to go? Andrew, you're good to go. Okay, Andrew just took an ambient, so we gotta get started. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining me here in the pre-show. We're gonna get started with the great night show. Right, uh, right about now. All right, everybody. Uh, let's see. Everybody into positions. Alrighty. 